Hey everybody, this is Death by D4, and welcome to my guide on how to play as the Druid class in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. There's a lot to go over, so be sure to subscribe, and let's dive right on in. At first level, you get a D8 for your hit die. Proficiencies in light armor, medium armor, shields, clubs, daggers, darts, javelins, maces, quarterstaves, scimitars, sickles, slings, spears, herbalism kits, intelligence saving throws, wisdom saving throws, and two skills of your choice from arcana, animal handling, insight, medicine, nature, perception, religion, and survival. You also know the secret language of druidic, which is fun, and you also get spell casting, which allows you to cast spells using your wisdom. As an added note, you're a prepared spellcaster who also gets ritual casting. So what does all of this mean? Well, you're pretty squishy, but also not that squishy because of your armor proficiencies. That said, your armor can apparently not be made out of metal, but I have no idea what that actually entails. Your weapons are actually atrocious, but with the help of a little cantrip called Shillelagh, you're actually going to be just fine. Your skills are, unfortunately, not very good, so don't stress about them all too much. Like I said before, learning Druidic is fun, but it also has an incredibly high chance of doing absolutely nothing for you, so I wouldn't get too excited about it. Finally, as a prepared spellcaster, your spellcasting capabilities are going to be quite versatile, as you'll be able to freely pick which spells that you can cast at the start of each day. All in all, a decent starting level, but nothing to write home about. At second level, you get Wild Shape, which basically allows you to polymorph yourself into a limited selection of beasts twice per short rest. At fourth level, you can choose from beasts of CR 1 half or lower, and can choose from beasts with swimming speeds. And at eighth level, you can choose from beasts of CR 1 or lower, and choose from beasts with flying speeds. Honestly, the many, many paragraphs associated with this feature lay out the rules for you pretty well, so it's actually quite easy to understand. However, with how far behind your wild shape will actually scale with your character's level, it's hard-pressed to see you actually using this feature for anything other than utility. At least when compared to your spells, this really isn't going to be doing you a whole lot of good. Either way, it's a fun feature to have, but just certainly nothing crazy. You also get to pick your druid subclass at second level, which is pretty unique in and of itself. So far, you can pick from the circle of dreams, land, Moon, Shepherd, or Spores, all of which offer you new features at 2nd, 6th, 10th, and 14th level. Honestly, just pick whatever speaks to your character the most. I won't go over all of the features of these subclasses right now, but if you'd like me to in a future video, please let me know down in the comments below. At 4th level, just like everybody else, you get your ability score increase, which you get again at 8th, 12th, 16th, and 19th levels. On the topic of stats, I'd be sure to max out your Wisdom score first, followed up by your Dexterity and Constitution score second. Beyond that, maybe put some points into strength if you really need to, or your intelligence just to improve its saving throw. Otherwise, I would avoid putting any points to your charisma, as it's going to be doing basically nothing for you. At 18th level, you get Timeless Body, which means that you now only age one year for every 10 years that pass. Funny, but also completely useless. Thankfully, you also get Beast Spells at 18th level, which allows you to cast Druid spells while in your Wild Shape form. That said, you are limited to only casting spells with verbal and somatic components, and you cannot cast any spells that require any material components. So, uh, yeah, what was there to be thankful for? Honestly, because of this restriction, this isn't really going to be that useful for you at all. Which is kind of a terrible shame if you ask me. Seriously, this whole level is just kind of a bit of a throwaway for you. Finally, at 20th level, you get Arc Druid, which allows you to use your Wild Shape feature an unlimited number of times, and ignore the verbal, somatic, and non-cost, non-consume material components required for casting any Druid spell. Yes, that means that you can now properly, finally do crazy things like take to the sky as a bird and rain magical death down upon your enemies, or continually refresh your Wild Shape's hit points whenever you need to. I mean, what? No, 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 I know this isn't actually broken, but it sure can be exploited. And for all of you out there that are interested in exactly what I mean by this, you should ask me to do a video on the Circle of the Moon Druids just saying. Anyway, this really boosts the utility of your Wild Shape feature to new heights, and you should definitely make sure you take full use of it once you get there. Alright, so that does it for all the class features. Now onto just a few of my own personal recommendations concerning it. If you like to play as a druid and you're stuck on choosing a race, I'd recommend the Furbolg. It gets you bonuses to your strength and wisdom scores, the ability to cast Detect Magic and Disguise Self each once per short rest for free, the ability to turn invisible as a bonus action once per short rest, the ability to push, drag, lift, and carry more than other races, and the ability to communicate on a basic level with plants and animals. Overall, not a lot of features that blend graciously with your class, but they're very useful utility and they certainly fit the theme of the class perfectly well. At the very least, the ability score bonuses are quite good for you. All in all, not a bad choice for you to have in general. Now, as for feats, I'd recommend taking Brazilian, 
mainly because it'll get you proficiency and constitution saving throws, which will really help you maintain concentration on all of your spells. Aside from that, you could also take Warcaster, which allows you to cast spells with your shield up and further help you maintain concentration on all of your spells. And Elemental Adept, as it will help boost up the reliability of one of your damaging cantrips or spells. Speaking of spells, let's talk about those now. For your cantrips, I definitely recommend taking Shillelagh, as it will help you turn all of your pitiful melee attacks into something that's actually viable for you. You could also take Magic Stone if you're interested in doing basically the same thing, except with a sling instead of melee. Aside from that, Mending can be quite useful, and Guidance can also be a convenient buff that you can hand out to your party whenever they need it. As for the rest of your spells, here's a list of a bunch of useful ones that I think are worth looking into. Cure Wounds, Detect Magic, Fairy Fire, Goodberry, Healing Word, Ice Knife, Snare, Thunder Wave, Earthbind, Enhance Ability, Flaming Sphere, Healing Spirit, Heat Metal, Hold Person, Lesser Restoration, Locate Object, Pass Without Trace, Call Lightning, Conjure Animals, Daylight, Dispel Magic, Erupting Earth, Feign Death, Sleet Storm, Tidal Wave, Water Breathing, Wind Wall, Blight, Confusion, Conjure Woodland Beings, Elemental Bane, Ice Storm, Locate Creature, Polymorph, Stone Skin, Wall of Fire, Anti-Life Shell, Commune with Nature, Conjure Elemental, Contagion, Greater Restoration, Mass Cure Wounds, Reincarnate, Tree Stride, Conjure Fae, Heal, Hero's Feast, Primordial Ward, Sunbeam, Transport via Plants, Windwalk, Firestorm, Regenerate, Reverse Gravity, Feeble Mind, Sunburst, Foresight, Shape Change, and True Resurrection. And that's it. That's everything you need to know in order to play as a druid. Personally, I believe that the druid class is best played as a midline spellcaster whose role is to help provide flexible utility for the rest of the party. However, that's just my opinion. So what are your thoughts on the matter? Are you excited to give the druid a try? And if you already have, what was your experience with it like? Let me know down in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to give this video a like and consider supporting me over on Patreon. Patreon supporters gain access to my Patreon-only server over on Discord, where you can join in on my games and chat with me and other patrons about anything D&D related. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't, and if you're interested in seeing more videos of mine, here's one right up over here. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see all of you in the next video.